the Gartner hype cycle has entered a retrograde path. Machine learning is post-peak with AGI pre-peak. Machine learning is the path to AGI. If the cycle is reversed, is it really a cycle or indication of a broader phenomenon? If history tells us anything, ancient astronomers abandoned circuitous epicycle calculations under the pressure of more evidence. Microsoft and OpenAI raised a $100 million seed fund for AI tools to help human productivity. They certainly aren't the first to invest. Gartner writes, despite the global impact of COVID-19, 47% of AI investments were unchanged since the start of the pandemic, and 30% of organizations actually plan to increase such investments. Only 16% had temporarily suspended AI investments and just 7% had decreased them. Why are OpenAI and others investing significant sums this late in the AI game? We can first look to their recent three advances in AI tools to understand where disruption will occur in text generation, image generation, and self-supervised AI. But first, we need to get to the root cause of the inversion of the Gardner hype cycle. Are we actually in a super cycle where momentary periods of consolidation form the basis for the launch of the next growth phase. OpenAI continues to hammer on their secret weapon, using machine learning on data creation itself as a self-multiplicative growth enhancer. Always helpful is tracking the data. McKinsey writes, AI applications generate vast volumes of data, about 80 exabytes per year, which is expected to increase to 845 exabytes by 2025. Data generation is certainly a driver of semiconductor use, but how could it affect AI? Early work from NVIDIA suggests that automated labeling techniques could use AI to generate data for more AI. This is a big development. An exponential growth rate is by definition a self-multiplicative growth rate. Using AI to generate more AI applications is adding a dimension to catalyze the industry. However, it seems strange that AI would be so securitous, like a dragon eating its own tail. Is it an illusory result, a perpetual motion machine with a hidden driver? An answer has to deal with the pursuit of unsupervised AI, that is, training AI with no human intervention. Now, only in very narrow cases has pure AI succeeded in performance. Instances such as chess or Atari games where all the rules are known at the outset. Due to the difficulty of real-world problems, developers have turned to self-supervised methods, baking in a few learning heuristics that have far-reaching effects. For instance, cycle consistency can link two realms of artistic style, and going from A to B to A domain again means both realms are understood in context of each other. Has OpenAI and other AI leaders created unsupervised AI or self-supervised AI? In 2020, OpenAI released GPT-3, a text generation model that we could reasonably interpret as unsupervised. The main training criteria in GPT-3 is regeneration of the input text. Given a very carefully curated dataset of internet text, they trained the model to consider 3.2 million word equivalents at a time and play fill in the blank on a percentage of the 3.2 million items. The large size of a single batch, besides being a formidable engineering challenge, might be considered a workaround to effectively mimic a human's long-term memory. Indeed, adding explicit long-term storage to AI models never resulted in the advanced performance of GPT-3, a model considered by OpenAI as too dangerous to release. Much like how an airplane does not fly in the same way as a bird, unsupervised AI might come from a very different design pattern than human intelligence. Despite the success of GPT-3, OpenAI turned to self-supervised methods in 2021 with DALI and CLIP. DALI is a text-to-image generation model and CLIP is a visual classification and retrieval model. CLIP, which stands for Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training, uses the self-supervised task of predicting which natural language phrase describes an image found paired together in proximity on the web. DALI builds on Google's visual transformer work to apply transformer networks to both image and text. 
while this means that the training procedure is similar to the GPT-3 training procedure. The big differentiator is they use the clip model to rank and sort the generated images. Without this final machine learning data curation touch, the image generation can be hit or miss. OpenAI is consistent in their philosophical approach. Recent work from Alex Radford et al. applied weekly supervised training for greatly improved speech-to-text application, including multilingual support. Weekly supervised transcription data expanded the input dataset by nearly 70 times. OpenAI did this in a principled fashion by using internet-scale paired audio and transcripts, developing a secret sauce heuristic to filter subpar ASR transcripts. Given their expertise in machine learning, my best guess on their heuristic is a Kaggle-style machine learning in the loop system to classify data quality. In the long run, data quality demands a scientific approach towards curation and selection. The qualitative results are startling. Karpathy writes in a tweet, playing with whisper, fed in one minute, 25 second audio snippet from one of my lectures. I speak fast. I correct myself and backtrack a bit. I use technical terms, MLP, RNN, GRU. 10 seconds later, the 292 word transcription is perfect, except Bengio at all 2003 should be spelled Bengio, impressed. From the recent evolution of OpenAI and the community from unsupervised to self-supervised training, we find the secret of AI models as a workflow optimizer. It's likely in the future a collection of AI models will take on functions to augment all expert work. For example, rank sorting a giant brainstorm of expert ideas. Such a different workflow could be really promising as it could unleash the creativity on which humans seem to have a monopoly. Since the community is pushing the frontiers on self-supervised training, we would do well to track this trend for further breakthroughs, especially as it could change the expert work many of us hold dear. At Amicus, we have found our investment co-pilot as a value investing workflow optimizer, instrumental in bringing scientific rigor to an often intuitive process.